Hey everybody, it's you, Marcel Pajita, Sports Inquirer. We're joined once again by head coach of Georgia Tech Volleyball, Michelle Collier. Uh, coach, thank you for joining us for another session. Team was successful on his trip to North Carolina against the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack. Just overall impressions of getting those two victories as you progress through the ACC season. Yeah, I know. Really happy uh, to come out of that with two wins, two really good teams. Uh, I think a, a tough weekend for us on the road, but just really proud of how our team responded and, and kept getting better um, and just kept finding ways to, to stay in the sets and win the match. So a really, a really important weekend for us here. Yeah, and in that North Carolina victory, you won it three to one. First two sets handled them pretty easily. Third set, you dropped it and got to the fourth. Obviously, you want to win every match and you like to sweep everything, but do you like putting the team in those type of positions and having to fight back and face some adversity and, and show what it's you know really made of, uh, even when you're facing uh, just teams that you, on paper, may come into a, a better than? Yeah, no, I think they definitely uh, pushed us um, a lot this weekend. I think that they did some things that we, you know, we kind of oscillated a little bit with, with our performance and our, especially, I think, offensively, the way that we were hitting, siding out, things like that. Um, but it's always good when opponents challenge you. It's, it's nothing new, I think, for us. We know that going on the road against some good and solid ACC teams, uh, we're going to you know, just find some some challenges. And I'm just really proud of how we responded. Um, you know, there were a lot of players that that took times in matches and then kind of made made things happen. People came in off the bench, helped us out out of situations. And so a uh, really great team effort and uh, just um, two really good wins on the road for us. And before we get to Julia and her national line, I just want to highlight some of the other players. I thought Tamara had a solid match. She had 12 uh, kills and, and 10 digs. Uh, also, uh, we, we talked about uh, Bianca and uh, dealing with her, her, I guess her hand issue. She had double digit uh, kills as well. I actually had 23 digs, a career high in that regard. Because what about those players and uh, their contributions just to that uh, victory against North Carolina State? Yeah, no, I mean, these guys are, are key, um, you know, ingredients to our success. And I think that they have been um, doing things at a, at a very high level. I think Tim, has had a, she had a good weekend. She played really well against uh, North Carolina and then, um, you know, played well as well against NC State. And Bianca, too, I mean, she didn't have as good of a match offensively against UNC on Friday night, but she turned around and had a much better match on Sunday, uh, you know, and, and just did a really great job for us defensively. So, um, you know, they're, they're really doing a great job with their role and the things that they're doing and they're getting more and more comfortable and taking more responsibilities in, in other areas and just two players that are going to keep getting better, you know? Yeah. And we have to get to Julia, uh, 25 kills, uh, 17 digs. and those a career high in the digs named national player of the week, as we are recording just a few hours ago. Uh, I, so many superlatives. We've talked about her before just, you know, being you know, a national all America, but now getting national player of the week, what has been just her, contributions to the team and the reasons for the success you've seen her have with the Yellow Jackets, especially this past yeah. weekend. No, it's, it's great to see just her, you know, her growth. And I think her growing into the role that she's playing this year. Um, it's been really fun to see that. I think that she's, you know, normalizing, I think her responsibilities more and more. Uh, but obviously every time we get a, an individual award, we know that there is a, there's a team of people behind them. That, that helped them get there. And it's, it's something that we definitely um, emphasize in our gym is how everybody contributes to the overall success of each player and, and our program. Um, so it's awesome to see Julia get that national recognition because I think that it reflects back on, on our team and our staff and everybody and the things that we're doing in our gym and you know how we're making each other better and growing and, and getting better. So it's always fun to see that at, at a national level. Um, Obviously, really happy for her performance uh, this weekend and this season as she's continued to be, you know, one of the best players in the country. Uh, and it's it's great. I mean, she's got to keep getting better and she knows that and she's excited about, you know, these last few matches and, and how she's doing. And so uh, it's been neat to just kind of see her growth um, in all aspects of the game, especially in the leadership and, and her presence with her team. So it's been really good to see that. As a coach, or as a, as a spectator or fan or supporter, so much is made of the offense, the kills. 
But as a coach, are you not necessarily more impressed, but are, are you have, give equal respect to the amount of digs on the defensive end that she's able to contribute? And does that make her just become more of an all around player working on that aspect uh, of sure. her, her skill set? Yeah, I guarantee there's not one player in her position in the country that's doing both sides of the game at the level that she's doing. Uh, you know, she's uh, uh, passing really well, serving really well, playing great defense, um, getting a lot of balls offensively, obviously getting a lot of teams to defend her. Um, so very few people, I think, could do what she does. Uh, and she's definitely, you know, right now this year in the NCAA, I think, one of the most complete players um, that are out there for sure. And she joined the 1500 kill, a 1000 uh, dig club for her career. You're part of that club uh, back in your playing days. Uh, what about that honor? And you, I said you reached that milestone individually. What does that mean for a player to reach the, you know, triple or uh, four digits uh, in both of those categories? And uh, as a player, from your perspective, and then seeing one of your players reach it. For sure. No, I think it's obviously hard to do. You know, it's it's a, something that you really have to play the game uh, like we just talked about, Julia, all phases of the game at a at a very high level. Um, you know, and somebody that's not a primary defender like a libero and be being able to put up those numbers defensively. Um, it's it's really impressive. You know, it just uh, shows that she plays a big role um, in that side of the game for us as well. And, uh, you know, she's executing on both of these sides. And uh, that's the way that she needs to be to kind of go on to the next phase of her career here and, and be able to really be a complete player. Uh, and so it's great to see that she's been able to perform, you know, at, at both of these sides um, equally as, as well. So I think it's really cool to and impressive to find that. It's rare for sure. And from your playing perspective and your coach perspective, which one do you think is harder to get? Obviously the kills get more kills, uh, but you're an offensive player, you have more opportunities. Which one do you think is more difficult to achieve to reach the, the thousand uh, number mark, the kills or the digs? And which one do you take more pride in? Just, uh, or, or most players? Know, I, think they're, I think they're both pretty uh, unique, you know, and, and high level. I think that, you know, players that can achieve that kind of mark, um, they're playing a big role for their teams, you know, and they're, they're getting a lot of balls, obviously, to be able to get that much kills, but we also know every opponent is prepared to defend there. So the level um, of preparation from the other side against you, um, you know, it's it's high. Um, and to be able to put up those numbers, um, it's hard to do, you know, it's hard to do. And so I think that the kills might be uh, what stands out for me a little bit more, but I think that that number of digs also for a, a player that is a non-defensive you know, player, just a, not a defensive specialist, not somebody that's in the back row the whole time. Um, you know, it's a big deal too. So I think that she's, a, a lot of liberos take a lot of times, maybe longer uh, to achieve that in their careers. And, and she's been able to do that and turn around and do that on the kills, you know, so it's just, uh, it's very um, elite, you know, what she's doing. Which one do you take more pride in when you look back at your, your career? Your number of kills. I know you're. I know you're top five Nash in the history of the of the sport. But do you do you like the thousand digs too though? Because it shows your more complete rounded game. Yeah, I think that for a hitter, you know, being able or to be in the go to hitter, you know, you're gonna get the attempts um, that will help you get to the kills. But the digs, uh, I think, are what kind of differentiates you from you know, just another great hitter. It makes you a great player, you know, and I think that a more complete player. So I think that the digs do make you kind of go up a level on the things that you're doing with the game. Yeah, and now you have, going back to going to Florida, facing Miami and Florida State, uh, two teams that are right below you in the ACC standings. Uh, before we get to the specifics of the Miami contest, just how important is this contest uh, just for the team? I know you look at the RPIs, uh, the recent, I think the national polls, they have like the top 10 uh, came out as far as the NCAAs. Are you starting to look at those numbers now? Because you want to host, I'm sure you want to even maybe get beyond hosting those first two rounds. Are you at that stage now where you're starting to look at the the numbers and where you rank nationally? For sure. I mean, we're, we're paying attention. and But obviously, uh, from the beginning, I think has been, you know, let's focus on what we control. 
uh, and how can we put ourselves in the in the best situation possible? Uh, so preparing as good as we can for these matches, it's it's the most important thing. Is what we control. Uh, you know, it's just being well prepared and hopefully be able to execute what we need and and be ready for a really you know just a tough battle. Um, but I know we are right. I think our latest RPI was 18. So we're kind of riding that range um, to be a top 16 seed, you know, and we know that every point matters, every match matters. Um, and we for sure, you know, want to have the privilege of being back at O'Keefe and, and being playing these matches here. So we're, we're going to continue to work really hard here with, with that focus um, of getting ourselves there. But we also know uh, Miami and the Florida State are two top 50 teams who are you know, battling themselves to to put themselves in the conversation and to be tournament teams. And um, this match is going to be really important for them as well as they as they keep going. You know, so I expect nothing but a battle and a very big challenge for us on the road. Uh, but we'll you know, we'll start our preparation here today and uh, we'll give our best shot as, as we take the court against them. Do you talk numbers with the team? I've talked to coaches. They don't even acknowledge the polls to their, their, to their players. Some are open about it and you'll even not use for bulletin board material, but acknowledge, Hey, we're ranked here and everything like that. How do you approach that? Yeah, no, I think they, they are aware of it. I think that they pay attention themselves. Um, but it's really not what we should be in the, in the, in our minds, you know, we should really be focusing on the process and how to do, and how to put ourselves in every position the best way that we can. Um, so the numbers are there. We look at it on Monday when they come out, and then we just kind of get to work. You know, it's not something that's guiding what we're doing. Um, we do what we do regardless of, of the number that we have. So I think that that's kind of the main thing that we want to make sure we do. Sorry, we got a special guest in the back. You <laughs> say something crawling in the back. <laughs> that's funny. Go ahead. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no school. It's coming, you know, come with mom to work day. So we'll, we'll, we'll take advantage of the time together here. Um, but yeah, so we try not to pay attention to the numbers as much. And, you know, besides every Monday, we kind of recheck on them and say, cool. But we really focusing on the things that we need to do um, to just make sure that we're helping ourselves in the conversation. You know, so I think that that's kind of the main thing that we we try to focus on and, and really uh, pay attention to who, you know, who our opponents were in the past and how are they doing and how are they helping us um, and things like that. And just uh, take it, you know, one day at a time as we get ready and we, we know we got to keep getting better. Um, so, but we're prepared for both, you know, hosting, not hosting. I think it's, it's our main goal is to be, you know, in the national tournament. Um, and I think we're working our way towards that. There's still a couple matches left here that we can, we need to make sure we do our, our best and then, uh, Think about postseason. So we're taking it one day at a time. Yeah, and then Miami itself, uh, Savannah leads the conference in, uh, I think in, in kills, it was right up there in the top five. No, it leads, leads in assist. Yeah. And then Grieve is top five in uh, kills uh, in the conference. So the Hurricanes coming with a, a strong offense. Uh, what, what have you seen from them? And just how will you be able to defend them? And will that be a you know big part of that contest against Miami? Yeah, no, I think Miami uh, has, you know, historically been performing really well in our conference over the years. Um, they're always a team that's either going to the tournament or in contention to be in the tournament. Um, very well coached. You know, I think that they play well, extremely well at home as well. Um, so I think that for us, it's just, you know, right now we're, you know, we're starting to spend a little bit of time on them starting to look at, you know, we'll watch a little bit of video today, a little bit of video tomorrow um, as we start to prepare. Um, but just a team that we we know um, a little bit about their system, you know, and how they're going to play. Uh, they have a really good middle. Uh, they have a right side that's doing really well too. And, and you know, and then they distribute the ball well. Um, so just a, it's going to be a, a high level game. Um, and we're, you know, we're going to have to, to step up here and, and have a good performance on the road. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, Michelle, thank you for your time. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, safe travels down to Florida. Hopefully you can get some beach time uh, you. while you're down there. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.